Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show, and a very special review today, because we have uh, a perpetual calendar from Frédéric Constant. A new watch for 2022, this is the High Life Perpetual Calendar, um, part of Frédéric Constant's or premium collection, um, as the name suggests, of course. Uh, also, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. As we recently had the new Strata liners in, I'm wearing my own Fortis, is the 5100 based, the La Mania, that famous movement. And I have it on a wrist candy watch club strap. I like this because it's very sporty, very comfortable, but also the way the brushed metal of the buckle matches that so anyway wristwatch check done let's continue on the story behind Frédéric Constant is a truly inspiring one that we very rarely see happening in today's watch world it was founded by a Dutch couple Aletta and Peter Stas in Geneva in 1988 and named in honor of their great-grandparents who were watchmakers in the 1900s. Despite being relatively new, especially when it comes to Swiss brands from this heartland of watchmaking, this passionate couple's ambition, dedication and hard work paid off as they were able to grow the brand into a globally recognized manufacturer. In fact, today, they have nearly 3,000 points of sale in over 120 countries across the world. So how did they do this? Well, the watch we are looking at today perfectly exemplifies exactly how. With a ton of investment in proprietary manufacturing capabilities and tastefully designed watches that blended the traditionalism of classic Swiss watchmaking, but often with a new innovative twist, FC slowly but surely became a true powerhouse of horology. So what kind of innovations are we talking about? Well, from a mechanical watchmaking perspective, the first thing they mastered was their own line of high beat in-house made movements in 2001. That was then followed by the mastery of the core of the movement, their own silicon escapement wheel in 2007. Now, just to give you an idea of how significant this was for the time, the world's first silicon escapement, which is a special blend of high-tech materials to create a better, more precise and reliable mechanical watch, was first introduced to the industry by Patek Philippe only two years earlier, in 2005. What followed was highly impressive, their own tourbillon in 2008, then my favorite achievement of theirs, a world timer watch in 2012 with a unique mechanism that allowed it to be adjusted solely via a single crown. As you would imagine, these achievements earned the brand many prestigious awards along the way and then ultimately gained the attention of the Japanese watchmaking juggernaut, the Citizen Group. They then subsequently acquired FC in 2016 and added them to their extensive horological empire. With the might of Citizen behind them, they continued to push boundaries. In 2018, they introduced the world's first mechanical smartwatch, a hybrid of sorts that fuses smartwatch technology with an old school mechanical movement. And more recently, a revolutionary new high frequency one piece escapement in 2021. This is, of course, the slimline monolithic, which hopefully we will return to later this year with any luck. So in terms of the specifications, we'll start with the materials. We have a convex sapphire crystal there, uh, nicely and gently domed, and it has anti-reflective coating, as you can see with, with that blue hue there. Uh, both on the inside and outside, the entire case and bracelet is stainless steel with a nice mix of uh, kind of directional brushing and then a, a wonderful mirror high polish, which is just impeccably well done. Uh, it does, apparently, um, this is obviously a sample, but when you buy it, I, I'm pretty sure it comes with an extra strap. The lovely thing is, is they've put um, 
spring bar uh, well kind of like bolt action your bare hands it's very easy to and quick to switch out the bracelet is a, a butterfly deployant a double push button very well done and then this little heraldic kind of i love how it kind of folds in there uh, even the little bit of pillage work in there um, so nice detail and, and solidly done it's a three link bracelet and we'll return to it later in terms of dimensions well it measures uh, 41 millimeters yeah, it's just shy of that actually, but it does wear a lot smaller because the lugs to lug is quite small. We get a decent uh, slenderness of 12.4 there. Yeah, it's it wears really, really well. I was kind of a little bit trepidatious thinking, oh my God, it's gonna wear massive. But actually, even on my six and a half inch wrist, it doesn't feel too big. Mainly I think because this first link kind of angles downwards like that, it just, positions itself solidly on the wrist. We get 50 meters water resistance because of course there are a lot of points of entry with a watch this complicated obviously for setting those complications and we boy do we get a lot of complications. Uh, we have a date calendar at three there. At the top we have months and including second hand for leap year and then day of the week at the nine and then the classic moon phase at the six. We get luminous treatment. I'm not sure what lume it is. Uh, fairly decent orientation because of course uh, the six marker is there. That's a pretty interesting way. Usually it's the other way around, like on divers, you know, you have some some um, distinguishable uh, different marker at the, the 12. Uh, so you always know where 12 is, but this is kind of working in reverse of that, but it works pretty well. Normally I include talking about the movement in the specs and performance part of the review, but as this is such a complex and exceptional bit of gear, I think it deserves its own section. First and foremost, we need to understand how impressive a mechanical perpetual calendar is. A complication that once set can track leap years, therefore displays the date accurately for the entirety of one's life. In fact, if I set it now during the time of this recording, and kept it powered, you would not need to set it again until the year 2100. Which not only reminds me of my own mortality, because I certainly won't be alive then, but it's just insanely cool to think you can do this using little mechanical wheels and gears and pinions and all the rest of it. It's kind of crazy if you really think about it. It was the British watchmaker Thomas Mudge who invented the very first perpetual calendar in 1762. It was a gold pocket watch that you can still see currently on display in the British Museum in London. It would take almost two centuries for this technology to be miniaturised, but it was of course Patek Philippe in 1925 that was able to produce the first commercially available perpetual calendar wristwatch. The perpetual calendar is therefore up there, with the top of traditional haute horology complications like tourbillons and minute repeaters and so on. So where does FC fit in with their caliber, the FC 775 in-house automatic? It was first released on the market in 2016, but then in the form of a very classical but tastefully done and disappointingly oversized dress watch. The movement has some really beautifully done decoration that you would come to expect thermally blued screws, circular pelage work, Cote de Genève striping and this skeletonized rotor. Now just so you understand the amount of complexity we're talking about here, it typically takes even the most skilled watchmaker over a month to assemble these types of movements and that's just the movement alone because of course we've got hundreds of extra gears and all the rest of it to keep precise track of that exact date. Amazingly, some of these gears might not even be actuated for four years. This miracle of engineering is then displayed for you to enjoy with that extra wide display back with sapphire crystal. FC in many ways followed the Tudor path to success as the bulk of their watches are rooted in the traditional design language set by already existing iconic watches, but then made more affordable in some way or another. The first FC watch 
featured on my channel perfectly demonstrated this as it was an affordable ETA based classic dress watch that if you were to take the brand name off the dial or squint at it from a distance you would find it almost indistinguishable from the Patek Calatrava which let's not forget costs about 50 times as much. What FC did to make it more original was to increase the overall size to more trendy current proportions, shall we say, compared to the mid-century Patek. They also added the choice of more interesting dial variations, further blurring the line between straight homage and the term vintage inspired, which we hear so often. With the High Life Perpetual Calendar, we see the same thinking. However, this time, the inspiration is from the design language set by the legendary Gerald Genta and his revolutionary influence during the 1970s that we still see in watches being produced and designed today. So, how and why is this? Well, let's break it down. Essentially, Genta was the first to create super high-end luxury watches in steel and in a sporty modernist style. Here we see the FC flagship complication housed in a very sleek tonneau shaped case with angular cutoff edges and sweeping curves that taper and flow into the integrated bracelet. The dial, despite the complexity and vast amount of information displayed, is still kept well balanced with a loomed index style hands and applied markers that also have luminescence as well. This is more akin to sports watches and not the dress watch we typically attribute these types of complications to. Now you start to see why it sounds like I'm talking about a Genta design. That 1970s style modernism is then blended with traditional design elements, like the subdials, most obviously the triple bosom cut moon phase that instantly links back to classical 17th century watchmaking. One immediately thinks of Thomas Tompion clocks, pocket watches by Thomas Marge, George Graham, and so on. The mix of complexity in the dial and the minimalism of the case also reinforces this meeting of two starkly contrasting eras of design. The printed minutes and hash marks at the periphery add another layer of sporty functionality that you do not see in dress watches. But the lack of a main second hand then reminds you of hour and minute only dress watches again, so you can see this confluence of different watch genres. The greyish, almost Florentine blue dial is finished off with subtle engraved lines representing the globe that very much ties it together nicely. This could be a nod to the iconic tapisserie AP dials, and while far less intricate, does add some nice detail. So what about the negatives? Well, my first complaint, and I'm not sure if this is just me, but I would have really liked to see a seconds hand, a main seconds hand. I think that would have just um, bridged the gap, so to speak, or, or really brought the sporty dressy balance perfectly. Kind of like the um, JLC Master, what is it, a Master Ultra Thin, uh, the one that um, Doctor Strange wore, Benedict Cumberbatch. Also because you lack some of that functionality, there was no real way to judge the accuracy of this particular watch. I can't tell if it's, you know, 10 seconds ahead or 10 seconds behind or, or what it is. Obviously I'd have to get a time graph or something. Again, I see why they left it out, uh, but I think it would have been worth it. Um, just adds a little bit more sportiness in this case and differentiate it more from the um, dressy predecessor. The poor water resistance is a big disappointment. Yes, I understand there are a lot of points of entry here uh, with the pushers, um, but if they would have added some kind of gasket to that, sorted it and made it you know, 100 meters um, easy to do with the crown, that would have really elevated it to a more sporty everyday direction. Another big negative is, well, yeah, I was quite shocked to see when I was sizing this pin and collar links. On a watch costing this much, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I criticized the $600 Seiko the other week or month or whenever it was uh, for the same thing. So, I mean, closer to 10 grand. <laughs> yeah, um, I would have preferred to see screwed links, you know, something a little bit more uh, refined.
As vulgar as it is to talk about value and price all the time, it's kind of inescapable here. I struggle to think of a better value automatic true perpetual calendar on the market today. It's more than half the price of everything else available from the likes of JLC, Breguet, IWC and the other heavyweight go-to brands. Maybe only Glass Hooter Original comes close, but even then you'd have to go used. How have FC achieved this? Well, aside from the massive early investment in infrastructure and ability to manufacture over 20 in-house calibers themselves, you are not going to get the supreme level of decoration like hand beveling, hand engraving, black polishing, extensive use of precious materials, etc. As well as some of the corners cut that we addressed in the negatives section of the review. There is, however, a staggering amount of parts in this caliber, 191 to be precise. And most of them we don't actually get to see and are below the surface and left plain Jane, so to speak, again to save cost. But nonetheless, it still remains, and as much as it pains me to say this corny, cliched phrase, it's an amazing value proposition. It's just simply the best way to put it. FC were kind enough to lend me this sample version, so you might notice a little wear on it, but brand new, the overall quality and finishing is absolutely impeccable. It's certainly up there with all the big boys. So you really have to respect brands that lend watches in. You'd be surprised at how many refuse to because of the negatives section of the review. So always bonus points for those brands that embrace independent non-watch dealer true enthusiast channels like this one. For a relatively new brand, in the whole scheme of things of course, FC continues to create a legacy of consistency and innovation. And they've achieved so much in such a short amount of time, so you can certainly wear this with pride, not only for its mechanical magic that it's capable of. Many will undoubtedly complain about the integrated bracelet and strap, but at least they've made it easier to switch out, and I do think it's inherently part of its design language. I was very surprised at just how sartorially versatile it was, in the same way Royal Oak is, or, or a VC overseas, and all the rest of this style of watch. You could wear this just as comfortably in a tracksuit lounging about at home, as it works suited and booted, it is certainly sartorially versatile. Combined with this very tastefully executed and more modern take, compared to their first 2016 perpetual calendar, this offers the watch enthusiast a much needed wider choice, maybe even the only non-quartz under the 10 grand price point. There is no doubt that this watch is absolutely pure class, and ultimately, while not perfect, there is an understated classy maturity to it that I deeply appreciate. Aside from the obvious mechanics and value, the case itself is a true couple of order, a perfect blend of sporty contemporary looks, but somehow feels dressy and extremely comfortable. Who would have ever imagined that you can buy this meraviglioso complication for less than a steel time-only Rolex sports watch? Now that really is a wonderful thing. Would I buy one myself? Well, I'm not actually in the market for a perpetual calendar, although I have to say I've really enjoyed getting to know this. Massive thank you to uh, Frédéric Constant for lending this in. Personally, I'm actually now, because this, this case was so comfortable, I'm looking at their well timer, you know, the, the legendary one that only has a single crown to control everything. Very impressive stuff. I always kind of wrote them off as too big, but after experiencing this case, you know, kind of looking at their world timer, but anyway, <laughs> typical, typical, I'm my own worst enemy. Please don't forget to like this video, share this with your friends to support more independent free content like this. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.